Thirsty? Have you heard of this brand before? It's called vitamin water. And that's what people know it as, right? But take a close look at the label, right? The word zero on there, hmm, with a little indication that says TM. That means trademark. Now, who owns the brand? As it turns out, it's this little company that they put in here called Glacio. All this difference between a company, brands, and all this is gonna be key for your understanding of how to protect your company moving forward. Did you know that trademarks protect your brand and improve your business's reputation? But first, you have to ensure you're not infringing on someone else. Don't put yourself in a position for a legal battle that you will surely lose. Hey everyone, I'm JD Hoovener, registered patent attorney with the USPTO and managing partner, CEO here at Bold Patents Law Firm. Today, I'll be talking about how to do a trademark search for registered trademarks. Hi everyone, Chris Maley from Bold IP here. Uh, today, I'm gonna to show you how to search for trademarks on the USPTO trademark database. It's important to note that unlike patents and copyrights, trademarks last indefinitely. So there's a lot of names and different types of trademarks already out there. So it's important to you know, kind of search for your trademark before either you already start using the mark in commerce and then you find out somebody else is using it and after they may send a cease and desist letter to you or you just go ahead and file a federal trademark and then you get rejected because there's already names out there that are kind of similar to yours. Uh, so, mm, let's see. So for a trademark, they look for other marks that are confusingly similar to your mark. So that just doesn't mean you have the same name. It also has to be, you know, maybe in the same market, maybe the same channels. Uh, similar customers, they look for that, as well as similar sounding names, similar looking logos, and things like that. So first, you can just go to Google, type in trademark search, and go down here to the uh, first official one, to the USPTO.gov, and then you just wanna search the trademark database. Uh, there's three types of searches here. Uh, basic word search, word and design mark search, and word and design mar mark search free form. Uh, you know, we can look at all three, but basically when you file a trademark, you can either file it as a standard character mark. So think of it as name like McDonald's, Nike, Starbucks, uh, just the actual word. Then you can have stylized characters, um, cursive, things like that. And then you can also have a logo, for instance, the Nike Swoosh logo, the Starbucks Mermaid, uh, the McDonald's Arches, and other similar things. But on this website, you can kind of search for everything, and it's actually pretty easy to navigate. So let's click on basic word search. Um, so like we were talking about, you can just type in, you know, anything. So let's see, you know, if you're trying to file a trademark for Dolphin Wave, just go ahead and type in dolphin wave right in there. Uh, and that's a good sign, you know, there's nothing there. But you can also search for, you know, just dolphin. And then numerous um, uh, trademarks come up, about 895 of them. So let's see, we have sweet dolphin, dolphin safe, dolphin house, dolphins, um, blue dolphin. I mean, this is a lot, but of course you have to remember that it has to be in a similar classification or at least overlapping goods for yours. So you might be selling Dolphin Wave as a wine and then somebody has it as a children's toy. Uh, you know, that might not affect your trademark because it's so dissimilar in the category of business that it wouldn't have an effect on your trademark and no, there would be a no actual confusion between consumers for those type of products. Uh, but let's go ahead and look at, you know, the first trademark here, Sweet Dolphin. Um, so you can kind of see, get a good feel for it. Sweet Dolphin for washcloths, bath towels. It's just a standard character mark. Like we were just talking about the name. It was filed in December 23rd, 2019. 
and it was just published for opposition. So starting off, I guess it's important to discuss, you know, what you're seeing here. Um, here's the serial numbers. Uh, that's just the number, you know, so you can go ahead and search it uh, also on this website. The name, uh, the status of it, and if it's alive or not. And if it actually has registration number, that means it's actually been registered. So let's go ahead and click on dolphins. You can see dolphins, and this is for design plus the words and letters. So dolphins, you see an actual dolphin and then the letters D-O-L-F-I-N-S. And you can see it's a word mark too for dolphins. Uh, here's the goods and services is for energy drinks, energy drinks with enhanced coconut water, beauty beverages, fruit juices, energy drinks, and just uh, you know things similar to that. You can see the date of first use in commerce, 2019-11-01. Uh, um, so it was 2019, November 1st. And then here's the design search codes for dolphins, bands, you know, letters. And here is the filing date. They actually went ahead and filed it on August 5th, 2019. And the current basis is now that it has a specimen. So when you file a trademark, and it's important to know that there's two ways to file a trademark. You can use intent to use, which means, you know, I really want that name. Um, so let's go ahead and file it, but I'm not actually using it in commerce. Or you can already show that you're using in commerce and that there's already a specimen out there that shows it. You know, that's either, you know, if you're a restaurant, it's a menu. If you're a business, it's, you know, maybe your business cards. Pretty much anything that just shows your mark in combination with uh, the logo or it shows your combination, the mark with the services provided. So for instance, right, if Dolphins was on the actual energy drink, that would be good enough to show that here is the name in combination with the actual products that it's providing. But after that, so what happens at the Federal Trademark Database is that they search for any confusingly similar federal trademarks. And like we were saying, that's anything similar to the product. Oh. Blah. Um, okay, so where were we? So when you file a trademark, the federal database only searches for confusingly similar federal marks. And so that's what happens during the first period. They'll come back and they'll say, did we find anything that was confusingly similar to your mark? If not, then you go into the next step where it's published for opposition. When it's published for opposition, anybody with a vested right can search for the trademark and then say, I've actually been using that name or I'd be detrimentally affected. So for instance, when Kylie Jenner filed Kylie for various uh, uses, Kylie Minogue objected to that because she's been using the name Kylie. And then even though she doesn't have a trademark, she felt like she was detrimentally affected by that. Um, if nothing happens during the publish, publication for opposition, if nothing happens during the opposition period, which is usually the last one month, then the trademark is granted, which you can see down here at March 3rd, 2020. So that was really recent. But, you know, you can take a deeper dive in there too. So let's say, you know, you were filing for a trademark very similar, but you want to see what happened to the last trademark. So you can go down here click on the actual name, and then you can go to documents. You can actually see their entire file wrapper. So like we were saying, they file intent to use, so you don't see a specimen till after the notice of allowance. So if you file your trademark without a specimen, if you file as intent to use, then once the examiner uh, agrees that there's no confusingly similar marks, once the examiner agrees that there's no confusingly similar marks and then the trademark gets published, then, and nobody objects to the publication, and then your, then your trademark will be conditionally granted, but it won't be fully granted until you show that you're actually using the mark in commerce with a specimen. So you can actually click on the specimen and see what it is, in this case, it's the actual energy drinks with the dolphin name on them. 
Um, but also interesting is that if, you know, you can search for any office action. So let's say you want to use this name, but then you find a name that was rejected. And you want to know why it's rejected. So you would click on that, and then you would find what happened to it. So for instance, let's look at Dolphin House. And so Dolphin House, you can actually see an office action outgoing. And once you click on that, you can actually read while it was rejected. Um, this is pretty bit basic stuff. Uh, description of the mark required. Usually when you look at an office action, you're gonna see it's either it was confusingly similar to a previous mark, or they just needed to file some technicalities or things like that, work on some technicalities or things like that. Also, what could happen is that you, maybe your mark was too descriptive, like it explains the product. Like for instance, if we were try to trademark intellectual property attorneys, it would be rejected because it's too descriptive. You would be limiting other companies from you know, using the words intellectual property attorneys. Of course, you have terms and trademarks like California Pizza Kitchen. You know, people that, trademarks that have become so renowned um, you know, originally California Pizza Kitchen, California Pizza Kitchen was descriptive of its product. You know, that's just a California Pizza Kitchen, a Pizza Kitchen in California. But now that the um, the public associates that name with that specific brand of restaurant, you're able to get a trademark. So once you acquire secondary meaning, you may be able to get a trademark for a descriptive term. But of course, you're looking at nationwide recognition that your product is associated with that name. And so here's the California Pizza Kitchen. It's also interesting, you can go up, since we're still searching for dolphins, you can look at, oh, no. So back to the dolphins. Um, you can search for the actual images. So you can see what their designs are, things like that. Uh, but let's go back to structured or back to home so you guys know where to go. Word and design structure mark. So here you have you know, two search terms that you can use. And here's a pull down menu with all the different ways you can search. Um, usually I look at international class. So international class will actually show you where the mark. Oh. International class will show you what the mark is for that, they're, that come up in the search opinion. So if you type in international class, um, let's see where that is. If you go to Google and you type in international class, classifications of trademarks, you can actually see the numbers. So let's go to international classes. And then you can see here, class one chemicals, class two paint. So let's say we want to get dolphin wave as apparel. You know, we go down the list. Uh, so let's see, apparel, clothing, things like that. Uh, let's see. Oh. All right, so let's turn from here. So another way you can search is by using the word and design mark structured search. So here you can use two search terms. They give you fields where you can actually narrow down the results. Because a lot of times maybe you come up with a thousand, maybe you come up with even more than that. I like to search by 
international class. So we have the international classes up here. And what they do is then they actually divide the trademarks up by different classes. So it's easier to search for. So we have chemicals, paints, cosmetics, lubricants, pharmaceuticals, metal goods, machinery, hand tools, electric appliance, vehicles, firearms, jewelry, you know, just things like that. So let's say we wanted to file Dolphin Wave for clothing. You know, maybe we look at class 25. So here you could put 0, 25. If it was just 9, you would go 0, 0, 9. Um, so 0, 25. And then you can also just type in dolphin or, you know, you can actually just maybe the, um, maybe get in more detail, but we can just type in dolphin in there because that's the name you want to search for. And then you want to use the operator ter and to kind of search for all dolphin marks in the international class 25. And so let's see what that gives us. Dolphin Life, uh, decal six stickers. So here we have all the dolphin marks inside of the International Class 25. So these are somewhat related to clothing. So it gives us a better idea of similar marks. So I love dolphins. Dolphin, dolphin wear, dolphin style. Um, so let's take a look at one and see, you know, what maybe Dolphin Project is. So Dolphin Project is for clothing, namely t-shirts, sweatshirts, tank tops. First in use in commerce in 1970. That was a standard character mark. Uh, so just the word Dolphin Project, which is kind of the most broadest possible protection because now with this, you can use the name and any stylized mark if they look any different way. You can use multiple colors, anything like that. When it was filed, it was originally used in commerce as it shows as 1A. So we're gonna see an actual specimen they were using when they filed for the mark. Let's see, it was filed by Rick O'Berry's Dolphin Project in Delaware. And the disclaimer, no claim is made to the exclusive right to use dolphin apart from the mark is shown. Uh, that's usually interesting. It's interesting right there. A disclaimer is if you have any descriptive terms in your mark, for instance, if you sold dolphin shirts, you know, you would disclaim the word shirts because you're not gonna stop anybody from using the word shirts and the main part of your trademark would be the word dolphin. Um, so let's take a look at the prosecution history of this. You can kind of see, right, where they filed it, they have the drawing, they have the specimen, they have the application. Um, looks like the examiner helped out a little bit. But here's Dolphin Project, and it's the actual tag on the shirt and the shirt name as well. We can look at another one. For instance, one that hasn't been accepted yet, Black Dolphin. Uh, Black Dolphin was for belts, hats, jackets, long sleeve. Black Dolphin was for belts, hats, jackets, long sleeve shirts. Um, it was a standard character mark. It was filed as intent to use. They had not used it yet in commerce. Um, but let's go look at the file history and see what happened here. This was abandoned because no statement of use was filed. So like we were discussing, if you are not using the mark in commerce yet, and you're only using his intent to use that you wanna use in the future, the examiner might agree that there's no confusingly federal, confusingly similar federal marks, and then it can go through publication, and then nobody with a vested interest objected to your trademark. But then you still have to go and you have to actually use the mark in commerce. So you get a six month win window to file the mark in commerce, and then you can actually extend it up to five times for you know, a total of three years, but if you don't use it within that time, then you're ac you actually give it up. Um, so right, use it or lose it. And what they did here was they never actually filed the statement of use. So Black Dolphin, um, really recent. So you'd be able to you know, use that name for yourself because now it is a dead trademark. They only look for 
live federal trademarks on the trademark website. Um, back to that, so let's see, no statement of use. Another way you see that trademarks become abandoned is if you have a trademark, you have to pay your maintenance fee and then show you're still using the mark at around the sixth year and then the 10th year, the 20th year, 30th year, and then every decade after that for, you know, for all eternity and things like that. Um, but let's look at dolphin wave. So dolphin wave, you know, cool wave, uh, nature world, wind down. Um, let's see, let's see dolphin wave is one word. It's interesting, you can use some search command keys to better help you. So let's say you wanted dolph, which you were, you wanted to see if there was something out there similar sounding with the word dolph, but not just in, but anything else out there like dolph four, uh, dolph a, you know, you could use the question mark key. Um, so let's see, Dolph. So let's say you want to use the word lightning rod. Lightning rod it comes up. You know, there's a lot of things. Ah, 33. Lightning rod, entertainment services. But let's say you wanted to make sure. So let's say you're filing with trademark for the word lightning rod. You can search lightning rod and it would come up you know, with a lot of lightning rods. But you also want to make sure that any confusingly similar sounding names, you want to also search for those. So you want to see those come up. You can actually use some search command keys that, you know, help you navigate your search better. So for instance, you use light and then want to see anything with the word light to start off with. And then it may be light, light tin, light to neon, lighter, light bulb. You can use the question mark here and then let's search for that. Uh, so now you're gonna see any results that has the word light followed by something else. So light fly, light Sam, lighthouse. That's just useful if you're trying to search for a word, but then you're worried that something may so sound confusingly similar, but not have the exact same spelling. So maybe you can use question mark. And when you use the question mark, and acts as, hey, here's the first part, and then let's see what comes out afterwards. So it'll show you all these suffixes after the word light. Uh, if you use the dollar sign, let's say we, you use light name, and then we put a dollar sign where the I is. That'll show you any words Hmm. Uh, let's see, so what's a good word? Let's say you wanna search the word mast. Mast comes up, grow mast, things like that. You use the question mark, anything after the word mast comes up. So master E, masterpiece. And then let's say you can also use the dollar sign where you want to replace a letter. So you put the dollar sign where the A is and then search. You're going to see results with the MST, but not, the, not where the dollar sign is. So we have missed, must, most, a lot of different types.
You can also search for the actual serial registration number. So like we were looking at earlier, if you want to go ahead and search for the actual serial number, you can go down here and type, use the pull down menu and then use the actual serial number and type that in. And then here comes Food and Logistics International. Uh, so that's useful. Let's say you're in an office action and says, this mark was confusingly similar to another previous mark. You would just want to go ahead and take that number and put it there. And so you can kind of see what the mark was used against another mark. Okay, let's try one more. Okay, so let's say you want to trademark the name Green Wave for energy drinks. <coughs> okay, let's say you want to search for the name Green Wave for energy drinks. Um, all right, so let's see. So let's Google trademark search. You want to use the United States Patent and Trademark Office. And then here it says search the trademark database. You can go search it. Then you have basic word mark search, word and design search, word and design mark search. So let's say we're gonna look for green wave uh, for energy drinks. You can go ahead and just type it in there, see if there's anything that comes up. Um, actually, hey, green wave energy, but it's energy management services. Uh, so when we typed in green wave, a number of trademarks came up. Um, you can see the serial number. You can see the register number. If it was actually registered, you'll be given a register number. You can see the word mark. And then you can see the status of it was live or dead. The federal uh, trademark office only looks for live trademarks that are confusingly similar to your name. So for instance, let's go and click one, Green Wave Energy. You can see it's a standard character mark, which means it just protects the name. It's for energy management services, namely providing a service that allows customers to purchase energy from various energy providers. The first date in use was 2016, August, um, the same date as Commerce. When they filed this, they were already using the mark. Uh, like we discussed, you can file the trademark as intent to use, where you want to use the name down the line, or you're already using the mark in Commerce. And then if you want to show you're using the mark in commerce, you just put the specimen in the file. The specimen basically shows the name, in this case, Green Wave Energy, with the services provided. Uh, so let's take a look at that. You can go into the entire file wrapper and see what happened during prosecution. But here is their original specimen. It shows... Green wave, you can make a difference. Cleaner energy, green wave energy, solar, gas, wind. Um, when they filed it, the examiner did a search. And then after, you know, usually takes three to four months, they sent out an office action. And basically, let's look at this office action. Um, the trademark, there was no conflicting marks. So that's always a good sign for a trademark. They just needed to file a disclaimer. So the word energy, they had to say there was no exclusive right to the word energy. And which that means is if you file a disclaimer, it means that you're not gonna prevent any other names from any other trademarks from using the word energy, it's kind of descriptive of the services they provide. And then they just needed to fix some technical stuff.
usually, let's see. Yeah, but you know, that wouldn't have an effect on green wave energy drinks. So what we want to do is maybe do, you know, we could go through all those names, or we could do a more structured search. So we can actually use that tab right there and use green wave um, with the operator and, and then we can narrow down the results. Um, you know, by year, by something in the description, by the full mark, by the goods and services, by international registered, uh, when it was registered, you know, you can think of numerous useful uh, things to search for. Um, you know, like we we're saying, disclaimer statement. But what I like to do is search for the international class. So all the trademarks are divided by class. So let's search international trademarks with, um, classifications. And here you can kind of see chemicals, paints, cosmetics, lubricants, pharmaceuticals, metal goods, things like that. So what we're looking for is beverage and more importantly, energy drinks. Uh, so let's see, non-alcoholic drinks, light beverage, fruit drinks. Um, you know, sometimes your mark may have multiple classifications and you can get a trademark for those multiple classifications. You know, for instance, this might be in fruit drinks, but it might also be in um, you know, supplements. Supplements are things like that. But let's see here. So let's search for class 32. So what you want to do is put 032 in there. If you want to use a single digit, you can use 001. Uh, you just have to put the two zeros, so 031, and then let's see what comes up. 719. Um, let's make sure you can use these operators. Like, let's make sure it has the word green and wave in it um, in the actual mark. Uh, so nothing came up, but let's go back and look at those other results um, that came up during the uh, all search in this menu. So 59, so as you can see, this is Green Coast Pet Dietary Supplements and Edible Vegan Pet Treats. It's important to note that classifications, if you know, if your trademark's in one classification and the people are in the same classification, it might be, you know, still completely different. But this one, you know, has pet treats, edible vegan pet treats. You know, it's not very similar to energy drinks. So you can kind of argue that there would be no likelihood of confusion between pet treats or energy drinks. But there's the waves down there. So I think, you know, green wave for energy drinks would be, you know, trademarkable. Um, once going back here, we can do green, uh, and you can use the question mark as an operator to search for, you know, just any word that has green and then ends with something else as a suffix. So maybe greener, green wise, greeny, uh, kind of things like that. Uh, if you use the operator dollar sign, you know, it'll show everything. I don't know. Let's see. It'll show everything without the word. And if you use the operator, the dollar sign, it'll show you every word with G, R, E, and N, and then... So let's say you search for the word live, you know, results will come up for live, but let's say you take out the I, you put a dollar sign, then it's gonna search for any word with the letters L, V, and E in that position, and then any letter where the dollar sign. So most likely love, um, lave, L-U-V-E, L-Y-V-E, it's very useful because sometimes people don't use, you know, correct spelling. So they'll either use a Y as instead of an I or a U instead of an O or any combination. So it's always good to search for that as well.
Uh, I don't know if the trademark site's working. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, but I'm Chris Maley from Bold IP, and I hope that helps. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to grab our free book and schedule your no-cost consultation today.